Have you ever read mystery stories? I mean, have you ever read? Show me. You ever read mystery stories? Most of you. A lot of that's good. Paul talks about mysteries revealed. We were experimenting because sometimes I do sermons where I write on the, on the paper, and and from the back of the room, this room is just too big, so we're not going to do that. Uh, <clears throat> but I wanted to just kind of emphasize this a little bit. You see. Even though I have, uh, have always been an, uh, an avid reader, there was a, a long time when mysteries just wasn't part of what I read. Uh, uh, but then in high school, I, I took a, a course for English credit uh, where we studied mysteries. And so uh, we read Agatha Christie and Arthur Conan Doyle and, and uh, oh, like a dozen other uh, well-known mystery writers. And, and over the course of that study, we learned all kinds of things about the structure and the format of of mystery stories, um, but one of the words that we learned is a little uncommon word, but it stuck with me, and it, it, its roots are, are from French, and, and the word that we learned is this one. It's pronounced denouement, denouement. Uh, it is, and I'll, this is the, the dictionary definition. You don't have to be able to see it from the back. I'll read it to you. Uh, the, it is a noun, and the dictionary definition is the final part of a play, a movie, or a narrative in which the strands of the plot are drawn together and matters are explained or resolved. If you watch any of those cop shows, the detective shows on TV, uh, uh, or, or, or Beretta, or, or any of those old uh, police shows, uh, the denouement is that moment even at the end where, where, where they gather all the people in the room and they point to the guilty person. And they explain how the whole plot has, has, has pointed to this person and, you, and all the mysteries of the story uh, come together. Even if you're uh, uh, not, not into mysteries, but if you ever watch Scooby-Doo, Every Scooby-Doo episode has this denouement at the end. The denouement of Scooby-Doo is when they, they pull the mask off the bad guy. And he says, oh, you, you darn kids, I'd have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you. That's, that's the denouement. See, everything after the denouement is, is just kind of housekeeping after that. You know how the story happened and who, who done it. Um, and the rest of the story kind of tells you, uh, uh, what the happily ever after part is. But by now you've noticed, especially since I had it written on the paper up front, uh, and this morning's message is entitled Mystery Revealed. And so I'm sure some of you are wondering about that. Uh, in reply, I'm going to ask you just to bear with me a little longer. I'll get to that before we get to the end. Uh, uh, but we're going to begin 800 years before Jesus. 800 years before Jesus uh, was the time of Isaiah. And Isaiah wrote about the Messiah that was going to come. In Isaiah chapter 60, it says this, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you. And the glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. That's probably where we get the idea, where it crept into the church language that the Magi were kings. It was Isaiah's fault. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land, young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. And even in such a, a, a quick 
reading, we can immediately see several things that, that boy, they sound awfully familiar to us because we're familiar with the Christmas story. Uh, in, that, in that short reading of Isaiah, we see a Messiah that brings light to the world and dispels the darkness. We see nations that are drawn towards the light of the new Messiah. We see wanderers, expatriates, and captives that return to Israel from afar. Kings from other nations who worship him and who send gifts of gold and incense. And we see the fulfillment of many of these prophecies in the coming of the Magi when we read the story uh, in Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, we hear this. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. And when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. And then he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, in Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet, pardon me, this is what the prophet has written, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will become a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and he found out from them the exact time that the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, make a careful search for the child, and as soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star that they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. Now, I don't have a whole search for a minute. That's an awfully specific star. I, I, might, I might easily accept uh, for the astronomical explanation for, for up, up until this point. The astronomical explanation is, is in an, uh, ast astronomers and, and philosophers and theologians disagree, but it, you know, it could have been an asteroid or uh, a, a comet or a supernova or something, uh, something in the heavens, okay, comes up and they see it and they recognize this is an exceptional situation, the announcement of the birth of, of a king in Israel, and so they head east or west, whichever, they, they kind of went, they vacillate if you read that. <sighs> okay, I'll buy that. But if they're in Jerusalem, how does a star point them to the home in which Joseph and Jesus are residing. That is one awfully specific heavenly body. And so has happened is, is that this may not be, at this point of the story, may not be a star, but is in fact the Shekinah glory of God himself. Uh, that when, when, when the people of Israel traveled through the wilderness, guided uh, in, in Moses' day, guided by a pillar of cloud in the daytime and a pillar of fire at night, Shekinah glory, the glory of God. That certainly would be specific enough to a particular city, to a particular house in that city. Now, is that what it is? I don't know. We don't know. Doesn't say. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. And they opened their treasures, and they of gold, and of incense, and of myrrh. Having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Nations came to the light of his star to worship him and bring gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh and while all of God's lost children had not Israel we remember the thing that Jesus said during his ministry Jesus often said his mission on earth was to rescue the lost sheep of Israel and if we continue reading the scriptures we also find Paul's explanation 
of this mystery of Jesus Christ. Paul calls it out. Paul calls it a mystery. Uh, uh, and, and it is the mystery as it relates to Isaiah and Jesus and the coming of the Magi. In, and we read that story in, in Paul's letter to the church. In Paul says, for this reason, I, Paul, prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you, Gentiles, Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation as I have already written briefly. In reading this then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed by the spirit of God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body and sharers together in the promise of Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given to me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, don't miss that part. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. Paul says that the mystery of the Messiah was revealed to him. The mystery is that through Jesus Christ, the Gentiles have been invited back into the family of God. Once this mystery was revealed to us, then we realize that, that we've seen it all along. We, we can see the revelation uh, of, the, of this mystery clear back in the very beginning of the Christmas story. We realize that that the genealogies of Jesus that, that we were reading in the beginning of the Gospels show us that Mary and Joseph came from a long line of family, a long line of, of family that welcomed in foreigners and strangers. And we realize that the story of the Magi is a continuing part of that same story, a story about Gentiles and foreigners being among the very first worshipers of the newborn Messiah King. The revelation of Paul, the mystery that's revealed, is not only that the Christmas story is a beautiful story. Sure it is. It's not only that the Christmas story is good news of great joy. Sure it is. The mystery is that the Messiah Jesus came for all the people. And it wasn't just all the Jewish people. And it wasn't just all the children of Abraham people. The story of Christmas is good news of great joy for all the Gentile people. And that means all of us. The arrival of the Magi in the Christmas story is the part of the story where we show up. Whenever you read the story and, and you see somebody in the story that looks like you, and you go, ooh, that's me. Right? This is that moment. The arrival of the wise men is the moment in his story when we show up. While the shepherds were the Jewish outsiders, 
The Magi are the aliens, the strangers, foreigners, the ultimate outsiders. And this is, is one of the reasons that the Orthodox Church celebrates Christmas in January today at Epiphany. The arrival of the Magi is the part of the story that includes us. It is the Gentile denouement, the climax of the story where everything is revealed. Now, sure, there, in, a, this, in a story this big, there's more than one denouement. Easter is another one. This is that moment for us Gentiles, you see. This is our part. Epiphany is the part of the Christmas story where we are invited in, where we realize that we've become a part of the family. Epiphany means that Christmas isn't just a Jewish story. It's our story. And we are invited. In fact, as we read that scripture, you'll see we were not only invited, we are commanded as church to tell the world the story so, so that the story of Christmas and the love of Jesus Christ can be everybody's story. All of us are invited in. How's that for a Christmas present? Merry Christmas.